Hello lovely people, welcome to the Geek Cupboard, I'm Penge, and welcome back to Millennia, which is the new big exciting historical 4X game from Paradox Interactive, who are very kindly sponsoring this video. They got in touch with me and they said, hey, have this game key for a game you'll absolutely enjoy. Oh, and also, whilst we're here, would you like some money on the side with that game key there? To which, of course, I said, thank you very much, and yes, I absolutely would, that would be marvellous. And here we are. So yes, just to be very, very abundantly clear, Paradox are indeed sponsoring this video, so thank you Paradox, that is very, very kind of you. Anyway, back we go to the lovely nation of Cabordia, where things are looking pretty good. I am very happy with how it's all gone so far. We've got the two main cities, we have the capital Northampton over here, and then the very much more coastal Bristol over here. We've got our vassal Kazan down here, hello Kazan, and right at the end of the previous video, we moved into the third age of the game, which is the Age of Iron, which now means we need to go and pick something to research. So let's go and see what there is, because now there's going to be a whole load of new things in the Age of Iron. We've now got smelting, horses, construction, scribes, infrastructure, and arts. All of those sound really, really good, and I would like to unlock the secrets of them all, but we can only do one at a time. And looking at this, they are going to take quite a long time. Look at that. That's 10 turns. That's 16 turns. Good grief. Or we could maybe nip back to something that we missed in the Age of Bronze. And I'm thinking mining. I'm thinking mining might be quite useful because mining perhaps unsurprisingly means that we can then build a mine. Makes perfect sense. And if we go and look at the map, we can now see over here, we've got coal. We've got coal on that tile there. And we also have coal on that tile there. We're not controlling that tile just yet, but I think it's only a matter of time before Northampton works on that. So we could potentially get two mines down there and there to generate a load of coal. And then we can use coal for all sorts of other exciting bits and bobs when we pick up other resources. I think maybe right now that's going to be the best thing for us to do. So if we go to there and get mining underway, it's only five turns. It's only five little short turns. So I think we'll get that done. That should be fairly straightforward. And then you get some mines in, which is going to be quite good. Oh, Japan have declared hostilities. Okay, right, so this does look quite bad. It's not as bad as it looks. So we'd hoped you would stay away. Now we'll force you to stay away. Combat allowed in neutral territory. So they've not sort of exactly declared a full-scale war on us. They're not coming to invade. But if they happen to find us out and about in the middle of nowhere, in a place which isn't under our control, they will possibly attack us. They said, you know what, we're not going to come and fight you directly, but if you know, we meet you down by the, you know, by the beach or something or in the woods and you know, you're sort of hanging around and it's nobody's sort of territory, we will possibly try to kill you to death, which isn't great. Come on, Japan. Come on. I thought we were friends. I thought we were OK. Oh, they've got Perseopolis over there in the middle. Right. So that's currently one of Japan's vassals. There's another vassal over there. I can't see the name of that one. And then they've got their capital there, I assume. And then something down here as well. Crikey, is okay. I assume they have something in the middle because there is a road coming through here. So Japan might potentially have five cities, maybe not all directly under their control because definitely those two are vassals, but they still are doing quite well for themselves. We've got the three. We could potentially get Malmo under our control. We could send an envoy over to Malmo to get them changed into a lovely vassal, which would be quite good. That'd be okay, because, you know, the vassals send us little bits and bobs now and then. What do Kazan send us? What do they do? A tiny bit of money, 0.06 in terms of knowledge, and the same for culture, and the same for improvement points. So hardly anything at all, but, you know, it's better than nothing. It's better than nothing. And over time, we can improve that. We can make that a little bit better using various bits and bobs over here. We can't do it right now. Um, okay, well, I have our boat. Our boat's got to come sort of back over here. So hang on, bring. Oh, next. Hang on, boat. There we go. Right, bring the boat back over here. The boat couldn't go any further down here because, uh, yes, unfortunately, Japan have got control of that tile there. And that tile there is deep ocean, which we can't go into in our current level of boatiness, which is a bit of a shame. But there we go. So we'll just keep flying through. Bristol's borders have just expanded again. We are going to own so much ocean over here. It's going to be a bit silly. There is something just there. There's shallow water just there. So there's a bit of a deep bit just here. But across the other side, there is shallow water. Is there an island over there? I'm not entirely sure. That could be exciting, couldn't it? That could be very exciting. Um, how are we doing over here in Northampton? Housing is again becoming a little bit of an issue. 
Food is okay. Food is in the green. That's always a good thing. But housing is down to 150%. And also, there are some barbarians coming through over there. Okay, how about we get our team over here to go and fight the barbarians. You go and fight some barbars. Um, and have we got anybody else around? I think some people are over here. That's fine. So over here, we have a city guard and a war band. That's okay. Just looking after Bristol. And yeah, over here, we've got an archer, city guard, and a chariot. Okay, maybe the city guard, after they've dealt with these guys, could then go back and guard you know, the city, because that's their job. But then, yeah, if we train another troop up, they could go with those two to combine to become an army of three units. And then maybe we could go over here and destroy that bandit camp, because that bandit camp is becoming a little bit of a nuisance. We do need to get rid of it, because, yeah, unchecked, they will cause all sorts of problems. So I think maybe that's what we'll do. Uh, oh, yep. Yeah. The boat can come back round this way. Very lovely and boaty. Okay, I'm sure there was a fight over here then. So they are... Oh, I think we just destroyed that barbarian sort of uh, warband or whatever it was there. Yeah, they are gone. Okay, that's quite good. So you guys go back over there. You head back over there. That's all very good. And then Northampton isn't doing anything right now. So maybe if you guys... Oh, upgrade to crossbow. Oh, we could upgrade our archers to crossbowmen for nine and a half warfare XP. We've got 34 right now, and we're not using it for anything else. So do you know what? Yes, absolutely. Do that, please. Upgrade them to be crossbow users. Oh, and look, we've got more visibility. Can they see further? I assume they can. Okay, that's quite good. And down here, there are more barbarians. But I think we should be okay. What if... What if oh, we need one more Warfare XP and we generate zero per turn? Well, that's a bit unfortunate, isn't it? Okay, we can't do much with that then. Um, can we do anything in there? No. Ah, yes. Because we're now in the Age of Iron, we could potentially change our government around. A new form of government is available, which is quite good, which is quite good. However, you have to move into that type of government via a particular means. You can either use a culture power to, where is it, just there, to go into a, a bit of a peaceful revolution. So you know, it's all organised and everyone's happy about it. And everyone goes, yeah, your new government. But that does require us to have a culture power ready, which at the moment is going to take 28 turns. Or the other sort of option is we go for a violent revolution, which does cause a little bit of chaos. And, you know, it's probably not great. Chaos right now, entirely nothing. But we don't really want to cause chaos. So it would be ideal if we could go for a peaceful revolution. But I think to do that, you have to complete all the things in your current government tree. And we've got two things left. So I think maybe let's work toward getting this sorted out, shall we? So we shall raise a tribal army. Okay, well, no, we're not going to raise one now. We shall get the ability to raise a tribal army. So that'll give us a new government power thing for six government points. That takes us down to nine. And then we need 25 to then reform tribalism. That means we can then... Uh, go ahead with a peaceful revolution, which would be quite good. We get some innovation, which is quite fun because we haven't seen much of that so far. And we're going to generate an additional two culture. Because at the moment, our culture is quite rubbish. We're not a very cultured people. We're a very boaty people, but we're not overly cultured. So it would be pretty good if that went up to 3.2. That would be huge. Wow. Okay, so 25 government points and we get two per turn. And we've got nine. Hang on a minute. Let me try and do the numbers with that. So 25 minus nine is 26. And we need, we get two per turn. So uh, we're going to need another 13 turns, I think that is, to get that. No, we've already got nine. No, hang on a minute. No, we've already got nine. I don't know what I'm talking about. We've got nine points. We don't need that many more turns. 13 turns would be 26 points on its own. Um, I, do you know what? I can't do the numbers in my head right now because my brain isn't numbering, but it's probably not going to be that long. So if we just keep time ticking on and just you know keep things moving, then eventually, yes, we can reform tribalism and then get that all sorted out. And then eventually, when we get the culture thing sorted, we can do a piece of revolution and then pick a lovely, lovely new government type, which will be wonderful. But right now, we can't do too much about that. Um, you guys can... Do you know what? You lot can move into here for now. You, oh, hang on. We can attack them. 
we can get through the woods and attack those barbarians. Okay, let's do that, shall we? Let's have a battle in the wilderness. I thought we were more sort of in a wood or whatever, but okay. Uh, right, there are any archers. I think we should be okay. Yeah, there we go. The crossbowmen are very, very effective. Okay, they're brilliant. Um, it might be worth giving them a turn to heal up and then just taking that on directly. Just taking that on, getting rid of it, and I think we'll be fine. Um, can we? It's seven turns. Seven turns to train a crossbow unit. That's quite slow. That's quite slow. However, down here in terms of buildings, we've got so many things now. So many exciting things. We've still got the palisade walls, and we still do have the town centre, which might be worth getting for three turns for more government XP, just so we can get some slightly better government stuff going on. Given that we are going to change to a government soon, it would be handy to have lots of government XP to get all the fancy new things. Um, the meeting hall is diplomacy XP. That's a whole new thing we haven't got into yet. The crane is more improvement points. That will be fantastic. The encampment is warfare XP. The market is diplomacy XP. And it means we can do foreign imports and such like. The plaza, what does that do? That is arts XP. So that's another new type of XP. Upgrade to civic monument. Okay, 11 turns that'll take. That's quite slow, but it does give us six influence. Oh, the dolman gets upgraded. Okay, right, that's quite fancy. The uh, the food store gets upgraded to a granary. Got a watch. That could be quite handy to start managing the unrest. And then stores. What do stores do, game? Show me. Um, one domestic export slot. Four production. Four production. That's very, very good. Um, I think, for now... Let's queue up a town, not like queue up, let's work on a town centre and then maybe, maybe then queue up a crane because the improvement points are really, really useful. We want all the improvement points we can get so we can start building loads of things around here because it is very, very good indeed. Uh, right, so end our turn. I want to get through to the, um, the current sort of research thing. But yeah, can you guys heal up a bit? So you lot have a rest. That's all fine. You can come over here. There is a barbarian boat. There is a barbarian boat over there. Are we going to see very soon some naval combat? That'd be exciting, wouldn't it? Okay, you guys can just hang around in Northampton because you can then suppress any kind of revolution stuff going on. Right, here we go. So we end our turn. That means we should... Oh, they're attacking our little sort of um, support ship things. Oi. Barbars, no, away with you in your little kind of canoe things. Yeah, it's a barbarian canoe. Uh, no, because you're just being naughty and that's not allowed. Right, you guys. Uh, oh, we've got a pioneer. Okay, right, this is interesting. So I assume we must have... Yeah, does that come when we get mining? It must do. So the pioneers are a special unit type. Let's move them out of there. Um, they can sort of run about the place and they can set up little outposts which are not proper sort of cities, they're not towns. They're just like a little tiny place where your troops can go and have a little bit of a rest. But also, wherever you build it, if it's near enough to your land, it connects up with roads and such like. And then eventually, I think, is it in here? No, it's in exploration. Uh, no, there is there is something somewhere. One of these. Oh, look, we've got a new thing. We're generating some engineering points now, which is exciting. So yes, look, it's a whole new domain type with new things we can do. And eventually we might get a thing underneath it, which has one of these types of screens. Okay, this is very good. Um, but yeah, so I think, yeah, they can sort of go and set up a little, a little kind of outpost. And yeah, you can change the outpost into a proper town at some point or a city even. So you can change it into something from just you know, a little kind of holding point, if you like, to a proper actual city. Um, however... What do we want to do with you right now? Is there a place where we do want to go and build a little outpost? I'm not entirely sure there is. I mean, unless we just use it to claim a place down here, I would like to found a city just there because that would be a really good place to found a city because you're next to all that kind of fish over there. That's loads of food. That's your food sorted for a good long time. And then if you could, you could build a city just here next to those two things there put some hunting camps down that's some good resources too uh, and then yeah you're kind of in the middle of everything you connect kazan up to the rest of our realm and that would be quite good um the only thing is yeah do we use do we use whatever ability it is 
for them to sort of, yeah, change the outpost into a city, which we don't have just yet, or do we just train up a settler? It's 36 government points. Do you know what? No, we will use you. We'll use you, our our good prospecting person, our pioneer, to come down here and you can set up a little outpost there. And then eventually we will change that into a into a proper a proper city. That's what we will try and do anyway. It might not work, but we'll give it a good go. Uh, right, here we go. So mining is now done, which is good. So that's all sorted. Um back over here, um, I think now in the Age of Iron, we should possibly look at infrastructure. That could be quite good uh, because of ovens. We can build ovens. Now, I'm surprised by this point in history, we haven't figured out an oven just yet. But yeah, there we go. That's what we do. So an oven is an improvement. You build it on a tile and it converts to flour to two bread. So it changes some flour, which is six food, into bread, which is ten food. So we can just get a massive amount of food from what we already have. We're just, you know, completing that supply chain and making things even better, which is marvellous. So, uh, yeah, I think that's what we do. However, first things first. Oh, wait, no, pick it. Sorry, I didn't pick it. The infrastructure. Yes, go down that route, please. Uh, but, yeah, first things first. Let's go over here and get a mine set up on that hill there to give us some lovely, lovely coal. I, mean, I don't know what we do with the coal right now. I'm not entirely sure we can do anything with it. But if we put that just there... That's quite good. So Bristol, I think. Yeah, they're working that. Bristol are working that. So how is that looking, Bristol? Um, oh, no, hang on. Back to that screen there. So, yeah, they are working the mine for... What's that? Copper. Oh, copper's coming out of it as well as coal. Oh, that's absolutely wonderful. Okay, so we're getting copper from it and we're getting coal, which is just magnificent. Okay, that's really, really good. That is very good. Um, so I think eventually at some point, because we're getting copper, we could then build some sort of smelter type thing to turn the copper into proper ingots. And then eventually we could then get some sort of blacksmith or whatever to turn the ingots into something useful. And then that's another product we can keep that helps productivity or whatever. Or we could sell it on for some money, that kind of thing. OK, this is all very good. Uh, where's our boat? Where's our boat? Are they, oh, are they moved? They've moved already, haven't they? They've done all their stuff. I'm a bit concerned about our boat over here. The barbarian canoe is causing a little bit of an issue. But, um, okay, right, let's see what we can do. Can we have a little bit of a naval fight next time? Uh, you come over here. You stand there. You can't do anything right now. That's okay. Ah, you lot, they've healed up. So I think, do you know what? Let's head over here. Let's try and attack this barbarian encampment, shall we? So, um, yeah, the crossbowmen are going to fire first. And I think the crossbowmen can fire directly at the troops, do they? Oh, no. The troops took some damage. But, yeah, we are now attacking the walls of the thing as well, which are taking a good bit of damage. They are taking a fair whack. So, I think, yeah, we've not... The chariot's taken some damage, but the crossbowmen are standing at the back looking pretty, pretty smug. They're okay right now. Uh, so yeah, we'll come back and do that. And then naval combat. Here we go. We've not seen this yet. There is something there. There's an island there, but we can't get to it because we can't go through the deep water, which is a little bit of a shame. OK, however, we can have a fight with this barbarian canoe just there. So right, they're chucking stuff at us. We fired something exciting at them. They're going to chuck a rock back at us. And now they are in the water. And I suspect maybe they're a little bit dead. OK. Wonderful. We've taken a glorious victory in our first bit of naval combat. That was very good. Well done. Well done. Very impressive. Good job. Uh, we've got eight improvement points. Um, how much is it to get a mill? Because at the moment, Northampton is generating four wheat, which is OK. And we're able to use that for a little bit of food. But if we could turn it into flour, that would be better. And then eventually we can get the ovens in and turn it into bread. Of course, we need to complete that supply chain properly. Um, so, yeah, where is it? So, mill is 16. Crikey's okay. 16. Or we could invest a little bit right now and get a hunting camp set up over there on those, on that game, on those deer. Or maybe do we wait and get a pasture up there on that cattle because that gives us leather and meat. 
and leather is good for money and meat is good for food. There are so many things. There are so many things I want to get done. Oh, also, ancient seafarers, we've got enough exploration XP to do one of these things. So we can either make our utility ship spawn power a little bit more effective. It's just a bit cheaper. I mean, that's okay. That's okay. But that, I think, is possibly a little bit more useful. The utility ships have 10 movement, extra 5 defense, and one more sight range. So if they are going to get attacked, like we just saw, making them a little bit better at defending themselves is probably no bad thing. So, do you know what? Yes, we'll invest 30 of our points into that. Good grief. <laughs> Good grief many points are going into all these things. We need a lot more points. We need many more points to do many more things. Uh, right, here we go, look. So our pioneer can set up a little outpost over there and it's got kind of a different border going on to sort of go do you know what it's, yeah, it's part of our territory but it's not a real sort of it's not a real proper city or a town or anything it's just a little kind of outpost like a stopping off point kind of thing it does look quite fancy for an outpost looks a little bit posh but okay um so yeah there we go they're now over there you can have a specialization in it can you okay didn't realize that but there we go we can't do too much and um yeah they can just sort of revert back to the pioneer they can sort of pack up if they like and then just go away and go somewhere else. But we'll leave them there for now. I think that's pretty good. Right, back over here we go. Let's go and attack the Barbars again. And hopefully we can get a few good hits in on their walls now. I suspect maybe the chariot might die. I think the chariot might possibly go. Yeah, the chariot's gone, but that's okay because the crossbowmen are doing a grand job of things. Okay, back we go with the boat. Let's maybe for now leave that boat there in a defensive capacity because well, there might be barbarians on that island there that are coming across. And I do know that the barbarian canoes can cross deep water. They can come over here and get us if there are barbarians on there. We can't go into the deep water with our lovely fancy boats with sails, but barbarians in a Effectively, what is just, you know, a tree trunk that's been hollowed out and made a bit pointy. They can cross the uh, <laughs> the dangerous depths of the ocean, whereas we cannot. So they could just keep popping over to attack us. So if we leave you there, you can help defend, which is marvellous. Right, let's keep this going, shall we? 21 government points. This is good stuff. Right, final attack on you. Let's get this thing destroyed. It's only the walls now. It's literally the walls. Please tell me you can destroy... Oh, no. <laughs> we need another turn to get rid of the walls. Uh, Bristol. What do you want to do, Bristol? Again, I think maybe a town centre would not be a bad thing. Bristol builds things very quickly. Wow, Bristol's super efficient. Bristol has a production of 11. That's very good. Yeah, two turns for a town centre just to get more government XP on the go. That's very impressive. Good job, Bristol. What's Northampton got? in terms of production. Northampton has seven. Crikeys. Okay, I bet the mine's helping out quite a bit. I bet they get a lot from the mine. Uh, right, okay, we're gonna finish this thing off. I'm determined to destroy this pesky barbarian in camp. Come on, it's literally just walls. There we go. It is destroyed. And yeah, do we get something fun from it? Here we go. A distinguished artifact. The barbarians have left behind distinguished looking artifacts in their camp. We could either get a massive pile of money out of it or we could get 15 culture oh 15 culture might be worth getting right now the money's just ticking up anyway that's absolutely fine i will take 15 culture that means we're only eight turns away from potentially being able to change our government which is very good indeed okay yeah that was well worth doing and also well done over here we shall not forget the sacrifice of the chariot people, but well done, crossbow men. You've done a grand job. Okay, a new thing has popped up that we have to deal with. So because Northampton is now a city with a size of 11, it's got a new need, and that new need is sanitation. And you can see right now that we're not providing enough sanitation for Northampton to do very well. It's got enough food, 169% food, that's okay. Housing is sort of adequate, it's on 100%, so it could be better, it could be worse, it's sort of fine. But yes, yeah, sanitation is currently on one out of two. So at the moment, Northampton is not clean enough. We need to make Northampton a little bit more sanitary. And there is something we can use for that. If we go down here, we can get ourselves a midden. 
the midden is basically a great big hole for chucking in disgusting stuff. That's where we throw all of the unpleasant stuff and it just goes into a big hole instead of sort of hanging around the city itself. We need 32 improvement points to get one of those. So we're a little way off right now. However, you will also notice that up in the corner here, we have a new thing that says viral illness, which is generally quite bad, isn't it? So this thing here is linked to sanitation issues. So if we continue letting Northampton be a slightly unpleasant and sanitary place, it might then encourage a virus to go and spread around. And that could well send us into the age of plague which would be quite bad. That's not an age you want to go into. There's lots of germs and people dying and plague doctors and general kind of germy and pleasantness. So we do want to avoid that. At the moment, it's ticking up by one every turn, this kind of viral illness power. If it gets to 20, that's it. The next age will be the age of plague, which we do want to avoid. So I think for now, Let's end our turn and we'll try our best to get one of those midden things in and just hope that that's enough to stop this happening. Now it's on two out of 20. I'm a little bit concerned. However, I think down here, we've now got enough lovely points to get our tribalism reformed. So we're going to get some innovation, which is good, and plus two culture. So, okay, Northampton is a little bit whiffy, but we are able to at least reform our tribalism government, which is quite good. So yes, please. We will do that. We get some innovation, which is very nice. And now we're earning 3.1 culture every single turn. That's quite a lot. That's a huge increase on what we did have. And in a couple of turns, we might be able to use our culture power to reform our government, which would be very good as well. So, oh, a region is idle. Which region is idle? Northampton is idle. Okay, right. So, yes, they've completed work on a crane, which is good because that gives us more improvement points, which is very handy because, of course, as we've just seen, we need those to be able to build our midden thing to get our sanitation under control. But what do we go for now? What do we do now? Um, I think maybe, maybe let's go for, I mean, possibly a market might be quite good. A market might be quite handy. I'm looking for kind of boaty things but I can't see any kind of, you know, harbours or special kind of docks or whatever. There's nothing overly boaty. So if we get a market, that gives us diplomacy XP, which could be quite handy. Uh, we could build a plaza to get arts XP. That would help us get some fighty XP. That would be sort of okay. Or do we just get the meeting hall over here to get some easier diplomacy XP? That's one diplomacy XP for four turns, whereas the market is Diplomacy XP for seven turns, but that does give us a foreign import slot. That would be quite handy, but then also we could upgrade our civic monument. No, not upgrade this, upgrade to a civic monument. So yeah, take our dolmen and turn it into a civic monument, which means we get a lot more influence, which means our borders can spread a bit more. Although our borders are quite big right now. Do you know what? Let's go for a meeting hall. Let's get one of those in, shall we? And try and do some diplomacy. That might be quite a fun thing. Uh, yeah, and also I just kind of want to get this done. I want to get this done over here. I want to sort this out. 31. We are one point short of being able to build a midden thing. And we can then sort out the problems in Northampton. However, next turn is going to be quite exciting. So skip through to the next turn. And we'll see what happens here. Okay, 1340 BCE. We can now get a midden sorted out. I mean, this is not very pleasant, is it? It's not a very nice thing, but it's an important thing. Where do we put this? Maybe let's put it, if we put it on the kind of scrubland stuff, that's not quite as good as the grassland. So let's put it on the scrubland. It can kind of go up here. Oh, nowhere. <laughs> I was kind of hoping to put it kind of not next to something important, but it's either got to go next to the housing here or the town of Portland over there. We'll put it down here next to that housing. I don't think it makes any difference to that housing. So if we pop that in, there we go. Right, okay, so our sanitation is now on five out of two. So 200% sorted out, which is magnificent. We have gone through pretty much all of our improvement points, but over in Bristol, we did build another crane. So that's added another one improvement point per turn. So we can now get five per turn. So very soon, we're going to be able to build lots and lots of lovely improvements relatively quickly, which is wonderful. And now I think 
we can use our culture power to enact a peaceful revolution, and we can reform our current government. It's all been completed, that's all very good. So uh, yeah, okay, here we go. Let's reform our government and see what we can do. Yet yeah, we are ready for a peaceful revolution. It's all fine, everyone loves a bit of a change. We can go for either imperial dynasty or a kingdom. And as you might expect, when you click on them, they've got their own things that you can invest your diplomacy points into. So let me go and have a quick look at all of these and let's see which one might possibly be the best fit for the people of Cabordia. Okay, so it looks like the kingdom government type is quite heavily focused on vassals. There's a lot of vassal-based things in here. You can get envoys a bit quicker, so you can get more vassals. That spawns spear units at a vassal. These two things here mean you can get stuff from your vassals at the cost of their prosperity. That means a vassal prosperity goes up a little bit quicker. I don't think we're going to have that many vassals. So I don't think we'll make the most use of all of these fancy things. So with that in mind... I think we go for Imperial Dynasty, and I do like this. I mean, other than the fact that we get to wear an amazing hat like that, because that is a fantastic piece of head toppery right there. That's very good. When you are an Imperial Dynasty, you get all sorts of exciting things. You get a palace. You can build a palace somewhere, which is good. And the palace increases region levels. It also increases production, and it can increase knowledge, depending on how many people you have in that particular city, which is very good. And then also... We can just get extra food, extra housing, extra sanitation, which is pretty good. That's pretty handy. So I think we will go down the route of an imperial dynasty and we can all wear some amazing hats because that's completely amazing. So yeah, we'll go down that route, please. And we shall just get this done. Your nation grows stronger under new leadership. So we can build a palace. That's the new domain power. And our domain XP can cap out at 200. And we can now also hold 200 improvement points. I mean, I don't think we'll get to that point because we're probably going to you know, spend the points on improvements, but that's quite good to know. So, OK, we shall have that. Thank you very much. And now we are an imperial dynasty. We've moved away from a tribal government and now we're an imperial dynasty, which is very good. And then, yeah, our government points can now go into these things, which is all very good. Uh, region is idle. That will be Bristol. Uh, Bristol, very quick at building things. Very, very quick. Maybe... What's Bristol kind of um, struggling with? Nothing overly. Nothing. Bristol is looking very, very good. Um, maybe, just to make sure that Bristol can really actually rule the waves, maybe we should get the dolmen upgraded to a civil monument. Just, you know, really, really conquer all the ocean over there. Just because we can, because that's kind of what we do. And there we go. Thanks to our midden, thanks to the great big pile of unpleasant things, the viral illness has been stopped, which is wonderful. So yeah, four out of 20, but now it's on plus zero. So we should be able to keep that under control. We can just, you know, put some more of these midden things down, maybe build some sanitation improvement type things in the cities, just to try to keep that under control. That would be quite good. But there we go. So at the moment, we are not going to head into an age of plague, which is lovely. We've also unlocked the secrets of infrastructure, which is pretty good. So what shall we go for next? I mean, there are quite a lot of things. There are quite a lot of things. However, that does seem quite good because that means we can build a catapulty boat, which sounds very intriguing. A catapult byream, a combat vessel outfitted with deck mounted catapults which just sounds fantastic. And it gives us other stuff as well. We get to build stone walls and stone towers, but given that we are quite boaty, maybe that would be quite useful. It is 17 turns, however. That's quite a long time. Uh, over here though, smelting. That could be quite good because we are now getting coal and we've got copper. So possibly if we get smelting, we could then build a furnace and turn that copper into ingots which produce a heck of a lot of production. That's five production. That's really good. And then we could use that later on to turn them into other things. In fact, I think a toolsmith converts two ingots into two tools for even more production. And then if we have surplus tools, that gives us something to sell on. So we can sort of trade it away and make a bit of money from our tools. I think, although construction is very tempting for the exciting catapulty boats, maybe... Let's go down the route of smelting. We're not missing anything important over here, I don't think. I kind of feel a little bit like we possibly should get some fighty people in at some point. And belief would also be quite good because we don't want to be without a religion. Uh, what's going on over here? So Age of Plague is 4 out of 20. Age of Monuments. We've not got any civic monuments at all, so we're not going to do much with that. 
And the regular next stage, if we don't go into a special one, is the Age of Kings. It would be quite good if we could go into a special age. Just something a little bit different. You know, sort of stray away from the norm. But um, yeah, we haven't got any civic monuments at all right now. So I don't think that's going to happen. I mean, somebody else could potentially be in all sorts of trouble with, you know, sanitation. I don't know. So maybe somebody else could plunge us into an Age of Plague. I'm not entirely sure. But uh, there we go. For now... It looks like we are quite safely heading into an Age of Kings, but there is a little way to go. So, uh, yeah, let's get the secrets of smelting sorted out, shall we? News from abroad. Okay, what's that about? Japan and Brazil are now at war. Oh, okay, right. So we know where Japan are. Japan are definitely just here. We can see them. We haven't found Brazil yet. We haven't found them. Do you know what we do have? We have got some scouts, and we did kind of retreat them back over here to, number one, help fight some barbars. But number two, to keep them from being killed over here by barbars. So I think maybe now that's all fine. We could get them back out over here again to have a little look around. Also, we do need to get another settler sorted out because we do want to found a city over here somewhere. I mean, there's some tuna over there. If we settle a city right there, is that okay? Is it too near to other things? I'm thinking we have a city just there and then we put the town just there so it's next to two important resource things, or even just here, look, because that's next to two resources. In fact, hang on, put the town there. It's next to three resources, which is very good. Um, and then, yeah, hopefully if the town is, if the city is there, sorry, it can then expand to get the fish over there, which means it can get a lot of food from the tuna. I mean, is that a good thing to do? Is it a bit near to this down here? I'm not entirely sure. I think it should be fine. Uh, we need 36 government xp but we are now getting four per turn so it won't take that long it'll take another three turns maybe we do that and get our third city up and running just here that could be quite a good idea okay the region is idle northampton is we've got the meeting hall so now we're getting diplomacy xp um maybe northampton is it's all looking pretty good uh an aqueduct is sanitation but sanitation right now is looking okay. I mean, maybe, maybe let's get a market, shall we? Or do we maybe get an encampment, which is about fighty stuff, but then when we train some units, we might get some warfare XP because we are going to need to train up some fighty people at some point. Let's maybe do that, shall we? So, okay, encampment for Northampton and then get a crossbow person in. Because at some point we are going to be attacked. Somebody's going to come along and get all rowdy and we're going to have to defend ourselves. So maybe let's just train up a few troops just in case. And um, We have got 13 improvement points. What did we need to get all sorts of extra bits and bobs? I mean, over here, I've got the two farms for the wheat. What was the mill again? Remind me. Uh, 16. Okay, so we should... Oh, next turn. Next turn we can get that. That's going to be quite good. Uh, okay, so I think then let's go to here, get ourselves a mill. So if we look at Northampton right now, we can see we've got four wheat. At the moment, they're just kind of happy with that. They're, I know they're eating the raw wheat. I don't know what they're doing with it. They've got wheat and apparently that's fine. It's producing three food, which is not too bad. However, if we're able to build ourselves a mill, we can turn two wheat into two flour for six food. So we can provide a lot more food with the flour. And then eventually, if we get the oven in, we then turn the flour into bread and make a lot of lovely bread. So let's do that. Let's get the mill set up. Um, let's put it over here. Let's make Portland a kind of baking area. Let's have a lot of bread. Let's have a lot of Portland bread, shall we? So I will put the mill, um, yeah, put the mill over here. And then maybe put the ovens over here. So the ovens, the hot ovens, aren't near the trees, is what I'm thinking. So pop a mill in over there. Okay, so that's now near to Northampton. And if we look now, we're making two lots of flour. Because our mill can take some of that wheat and turn it into flour, which is wonderful. So now we need to wait a little while. Going to have to wait a while to stock up some more of these points down here to build the ovens to get the bread, but that's okay. We have got all sorts of things going on over here. Um, engineering wise, we could spend some of these, but we could save up a couple more 
and begin expanding our towns. That's quite good. Public improvements, I think, means that we... Oh, yeah, we gain 10 improvement points immediately, which is really good. That's very good. I mean, that would help us get quite a lot of points closer toward the, um, toward the ovens. I think we're okay. We'll save that. And we will expand a town, because that's quite good. Uh, warfare, it can just raise some volunteers. I mean, we don't use that for anything else. Maybe for now, we just create some, I don't know, some soldiers over there. Just because we can. Because they're fighty people, and it's sort of useful. Um, exploration, we're okay with all this. Uh, claim territory, by the way, means you can go and grab a, grab a tile. So if you particularly want a certain tile, you can go, yep, I want that one, and then it becomes part of your realm. But we don't need to do that, because our borders are expanding pretty quickly anyway. I think, go into here, let's get this. Let's just complete that little bit over here. Just get this final kind of Biblos boats thing. And then the rest of our exploration points can go into Tyrian Purple and Almadraba. So fishing improvements are better, and we can get shells and then get a shell dyer, which then makes a great big pile of money, which will be lovely. Okay, right, plenty going on. And uh, these guys are going for a bit of a wander. Uh, yeah, can you find Brazil? That's the big question. Oh, there's some more over there. Um, the only thing is we have to be a little bit careful because Japan are going to attack us if we're not in our borders. So we have to kind of try and stay away from Japan if we can, because they all got a bit grumpy to Japan. I don't quite know why. But uh, yes, yeah, so we'll try and stay away from Japan and we'll just do some exploring around here. And let's see if we can find where Brazil might be. OK, our scouts have been quite badly beaten up by a horde of barbarians over here. They've got a combat strength of 75. They've got 35. They've got 25. They've got 35. They've got 20. We are going to bravely run away. Run away, scouts. Come back home. Don't bring the barbarians with you, please. Because that's quite a lot of scary barbars. But uh, yeah, I think maybe we should just run away from that. Okay, this is a little bit of a bother. We've got a settler. That's okay. And I would like them to set up just there. But we can't. Because down here it says, distance from a nation's border is at least two. Now, it can't be our own border, because that would be a bit weird. So maybe it means that we're too near to Malmo's border. But then again, it is still... we're still more than two away. So I'm not entirely sure how we can do this. I want to go and build over here somewhere, because that's a really good place to go and build. I don't think we should build on top of a resource, because I think that'll blat it out of existence. What if we build just there? Can we do that? Um... Oh, okay, hang on. Settlement is not within two tiles. Ah, okay, Portland is too near. Okay, so what if we go to that hill? Are we allowed to set up on a hill? I'm not entirely sure, but then are we too near to that place over there? Oh, this could be really annoying. I want to go and set up over here somewhere, but it might be that we just don't have the location to do it, which is a bit unfortunate. Okay, we'll see what happens when we get to the next turn. Let's just see what happens if we can move you about a bit. That'd be quite handy. Oh, hang on a minute. There are some barbars over there. Where's our defense boat? They've already been doing some good defending. Uh, yeah, run in defense boat. Let's have a fight with them. Chuck some things at them. They're chucking rocks at us. We fire back a gigantic big spear or something, I assume. I think maybe it's all over, barbarian. Do you want to run away? No, you might need to swim away instead, but okay, there we go. I mean, we're doing pretty well at defending the oceans. That's not too shabby. Uh, what if we go here? So, uh, ah, we can set up just there. Has not moved this turn is the only thing stopping us. Let's hope that no barbarians come along and cause any problems because that would be somewhat awkward. Uh, and Bristol has finished doing a thing. Bristol, can you train up a unit of city guard just to go over here and stand in the new town when it's up and running? Just to make sure that people behave themselves, please. That'd be very handy. Thank you, Bristol. Okay, I don't think it's ideal, but it seems like we have to put our city there. I'd like to ideally put the town of a city just there, because then it's next to three resources. But we can't do that. I think if we put our city just here, they're going to be a little bit too far away from the sea. And we are quite good at making use of the sea. So I think that seems like the best place for us right now. And eventually they will expand to cover the sea. And they'll have a lot of sea tiles over there. But yeah, I think that's going to be about the best place. Do you know what? Let's just get it sorted, shall we? And it's the city of Liverpool. OK, hello, Liverpool. Now, as we saw last time, they start out as a little vassal. And we can integrate them in 15 turns, which is OK. That's fine. And we will do that. 
we will integrate them because I think we do want them on board. Um, one thing I didn't look at, Bristol, you've done the thing. Oh, hang on, that's Boaty. Boaty, come over here and sort of hang around. Region Idle. Um, where was the... Can we not train up envoys yet? Can we? Oh, no, hang on. No, we don't train them. We produce them from here, don't we? Uh, spawn an envoy is 30 diplomacy XP. Okay, right. And there we go. Again, that kind of shows how this game differs to a game like Civilization, for example. In Civ, you train most things in the cities. You kind of build things. You build units. Here, you get XP and you kind of generate units using this. And then, yeah, other stuff you do train and other things you kind of produce via experience points and accumulated other bits and bobs. So, um, yeah, if we do want to get another envoy and then get Malmo as one of our vassals, we are going to have to save up, what was it? 30 diplomacy points and we get one per turn at the minute. Ah, however, engineering, we can now expand a town. That is very good. So let's go to Portland, shall we? So at the moment... We've got a region level of three for Northampton. I think if we upgrade Portland, we've now got a region level of four. So Northampton can grow to a grand old size. It can grow to 20 now, I think, which is pretty good. It'd take a little while to get there, but that's okay. Um, and the town is now a bit better, which is good. It generates more money and such like. And if we can click on it, we can now apply a specialization, which is very handy. So yeah, they get plus three adjacency for town adjacency bonus. So that's okay. I assume it's because it's adjacent to these kind of improvement things. Um, but they provide plus six wealth. And they've got some militia as well. But we can change it to a particular type of town. So it could be a farming town. So what's that? Farming towns generate food per adjacent farming improvement. There are two of those. So that makes perfect sense. Lumber town, it's not really doing any kind of tree stuff. Mining town, it's not doing mining. Coastal town which is interesting, they generate wealth per adjacent boating improvement. So if we did have a town on the coast surrounded by boaty things, that would be quite good. That would generate quite a lot of money. But over here, I think we turn Portland into a farming town and also a baking town eventually. But right now it can do a farming town stuff. So 175% food right now, change it to there, 192 we get a little tiny increase to our food provision because Portland is now very much focused on doing lots of farming, which is magnificent. I like that. I like the little kind of tiny details that you get with this. Uh, okay, region is idle. I think it might be Bristol. Um, Bristol, what do we do with you? Housing is coming down with Bristol. So I'll sort that out in a second. Um, how about we get you, I mean, stores. If we get you stores, that's another four production. You'll just be a production powerhouse, Bristol, and then you can just build all the things. So spend eight turns doing that. We can rush it for a thousand money, but we're not quite to that point just yet. But eight turns is fine. That's okay. We can deal with that. Um, so, yeah, we're making a crossbowman in Cabordia. But yeah, okay, that's fine. Yeah, so eight, eight turns to get that done. That's going to be good. But we need some housing down here in Bristol. And also maybe... A little bit more food. They are struggling for food down here. So with our improvement points that we are now stocking up on quite a lot, let's sort that out. So we did previously put down some dwellings, which is okay. That's five housing. So that's okay. But we now do have public quarters. That's 15 housing. It does generate some unrest, which is not ideal, but it does provide three times the amount of housing for only six more improvement points. I think let's get some public quarter set up to sort out Bristol's housing for a good long time. We pop that in just there, get some lovely fancy housing in. There we go. It's right there on the coast, looking very nice. Uh, housing is sorted. Uh, and then food. What can we do with this? Could we put a pasture down on those cows? They're working those cows anyway. They work in that tile. So right now they're foraging it for two food. If we change that, if we put a pasture down, it'll generate one leather for some wealth and one meat for three food. And then we can use a leather with a sort of, you know, I don't know, a tanner or something to make it into a product we can sell and turn it into other things. Yeah, let's do that. Get us a pasture, pop it onto there. Food is now on 144%, so a little bit better. And yeah, I think maybe given that there is plenty of fish over here near Bristol, we should possibly just get some fishing boats. 
Let's save up our points and get fishing boats over here. And then Bristol can, yes, just you know, reap the rewards of the ocean over there. Okay, Northampton having a little bit of a housing issue. So let's use some of our very quickly amassing improvement points to get another public quarters in. Let's get another one of those in. Pop that again, put it on the kind of scrubland stuff because that doesn't do much else. So put that just there. And there we go, sorted out. In fact, Northampton's needs are looking very good. That's looking very healthy indeed. Oh, we've got our very first innovation. Okay, this is very exciting. So somebody somewhere in the realm of Cabordia has done a clever thing. They've had an innovation. They've come up with some wonderful idea and it is Damascus steel. A smith in Cabordia has developed a method to cast a more pure form of steel. Your army should be able to use this material to create sturdier blades. Okay, so we can choose to accept this innovation, which unlocks a Damascus sword. Okay, that's a type of sword unit. Okay, they seem quite exciting. Or, if we don't fancy that, we can just take a great big pile of money. But I think, let's take a fancy new unit type that might well be unique to us. Because I don't know if other people can have the same innovations or not. So, it's unlikely they might get the same one. I imagine there's lots of these types of things. And if somebody else were to get the same one, that'd be a surprise. So, I think this might give us a lovely unique unit. So, yeah, okay. We will have that, thank you. And now, yeah, the innovation counter sort of comes back down. Chaos is currently nice and stable. That will change at some point. But uh, yeah, I quite like the innovations. They're quite fun. And we've now also unlocked the secrets of smithing or smelting, which I was. There we go. Whacking the hot things with a hammer. Okay, so we've got that done. We now need another technology. And if we do get that, we can then begin to think about moving into the Age of Kings. Somebody has built a civic monument. Somebody out there has got one civic monument. I'm not entirely sure if that's just one civ. Uh, one civ. I shouldn't say civ. One nation, sorry. Um, or if that's cumulative. So if we built a civic monument and then Greece built one and then, I don't know, Brazil built one, then would that count as three or do we need three? Can we even have three or is it just one per one per nation? I do not know. But OK, right. What do we go for here with the Age of Iron? I mean, I'm thinking maybe I'm not so bothered about horses. Not so fussed about that. Construction is quite good because of the catapulty boat. That's quite fun. Uh, scribes. Scribes are all about making paper and you know, producing libraries and having knowledge and such like, which could be quite good. Arts, though. Arts is quite good. Theatres, we get theatres, we get sculpting studios. Uh, we can get an artist. Okay, that's quite fun. Get a fancy artist. And we can build a coliseum. I think maybe let's go down the route of art, shall we? That could be quite fun. Yes, please. We shall get all arty. Oh, this is quite good news. Whereas Japan don't really like us very much, they want to kill us if they find us wandering about in the world, Brazil are willing to open borders. That's quite good. Yes, absolutely. Let's do that to become good friends with Brazil, even though we don't really know where they are. I've got no idea where Brazil is. Uh, they, they're probably over here somewhere, hidden away in the mist over there. We kind of can't really get round here with our boat because Japan is sort of in the way, which is a bit of a shame. And whenever we try and go over here, there seem to be 220 Brazilian barbarians who would like to chop us into tiny pieces. So it is quite difficult to explore over in that direction. It's quite tricky. Uh, maybe, could we possibly get a boat to come round this way? That might be a good idea. Could we maybe get Bristol, which is, you know, very boaty, to make a boat to come round here. That might help. Uh, we do have a culture power ready. What can we do now? Um, we could, what's cutting edge do? Remind me, increase innovation accumulated each turn plus 10 innovation. Ah, so we could maybe try and get another lovely kind of innovative thing that we just saw, like our Damascus steel stuff. Um, we could, however, create a town. Maybe do we create a town next to Liverpool. The only thing is I'm not entirely sure where we could put it unless what if we put the town here and then in those trees we build various kind of forestry improvements. We've got things like that. We've got like uh, forestry camps and such like saw pits and things like that. Where's the thing which chops down? A forester. There we go. So a forester produces logs and the saw pit turns the logs into lumber for four production. So that could be quite good over there. 
that'd be really good from Liverpool. And then if we put, say, a mine just there as well, that would also generate quite a big pile of production. Liverpool, a bit like Bristol, could become a bit of a production powerhouse. So maybe that's what we do. So let us create a town. We'll put it just there. So it's not next to any improvements right now, but it will be soon enough. So if we pop that there, just make sure it is linking to Liverpool. Yeah, region Liverpool. Okay, so we could put that there. Although on the flip side, on the flip side, we can now have another town linked to either Northampton or Bristol. And then, of course, if we level it up with our engineering XP, we can then specialize it, and that could also be quite powerful. Um, I mean, maybe, maybe we do give it to Liverpool now, but next time we build another town for Northampton, then one for Bristol, then one for Liverpool again. And then, you know, maybe down here, if we go and grab that place as well, turn that into a nice city, see what that can do. Um, yeah. Let's put one here for now, shall we? Uh, so what's it going to be called? Sacramento. Okay, so the city of Liverpool with the nearby town of Sacramento. We just pop a scout onto that just to make sure that no barbars come along and burn it down. We've seen it before. We'll never forget Lincoln. There we go. Wonderful. So Liverpool now has a little town over here. Uh, we have got 21 improvement points. Is it worth maybe, can we get the oven? It's 24. 24 for an oven. Okay, do you know what? Go to next turn. Let's get bread. Let's maybe finish things off in this video by getting some lovely bread into the nation of Cambodia. That'd be quite good. Uh, yeah, get an oven, 24 points. Turns two flour, which provides six food, into two bread for 10 food. So just to make sure Northampton is generating, yeah, a little bit of flour right now. So we will take that flour and we will raise that flour and turn it into some lovely bread with an oven. Here we go, pop that just there. And there we go, Northampton's food needs are now being looked after again. We've got a little kind of bakery set up going on. And all the people that work there as well, sort of homes and stuff have sprung up around it, which is marvelous. Sanitation looking a little bit, a little bit dodgy over in Northampton. So we could do with building, say some aqueducts in there possibly. Uh, let's go to the next turn actually, because I think Bristol, is about to finish building its stores. Oh no, there are some barbarians and our scouts got attacked and our scouts have just fought them off. Good job, scouts. Okay, <laughs> that's very efficient. Good job. Um, yeah, Bristol is now, oh, it's at its population limit. Oh, okay. Do we need other things around here? We might need to level the town up possibly. Um, Okay, we'll see what we can do. However, yeah, food is looking a little bit low. Maybe a granary would not be a bad thing, but let's get a galley first so we can then explore around the top of the sort of landmass we're on. Uh, and then maybe Damascus sword. Let's try, hang on, encampment might be a good idea first, might it not? Um, yeah, hang on, get rid of that. No, not that, get rid of that. Encampment, then a galley. Oh, hang on, no, encampment, then press the right button, then a galley. There we go, wonderful. And just finish that off. That's that scout just kind of hanging around. Yep, absolutely. Just sort of fortify over there. I did at one point send some people. I thought I did. I thought I sent the city guard from over here that we trained to go and stand in Liverpool. But I clearly didn't press the button hard enough to make them move over. Okay, hang on. Let's get them over in Liverpool. Because otherwise, if we wrap things up now, I'll forget what they're doing. So hang on, let's just move them over into the little fledgling city of Liverpool. And then when they're in, it'll all be fine. Hang on, Liverpool, defence is coming. Hang on a minute, some barbarians have appeared over here near Bristol. Where did they come from? Is there an encampment over here? If there is, that would be quite bad. Uh, okay, where's our boat? Boat, can we see if there's an encampment over there? Oh, not quite, botherations. Uh, okay, you guys... Come out here and give them a little bit of a fight, please. You go and have a fight with them. We should be okay because we have the City Watch with us as well. And they're you know, an extra fighting force. Although these guys, oh, they're elite barbarians. Okay, right. We might need some help with this. Rush through to the end of the fight. Um, pretty even. Pretty even there. It's a bit annoying that we sent a, a troop of soldiers away. That's a bit of a bother, isn't it? Uh, right, crossbowmen. Can you... They can run on the road. 
they can do they can sort this out pretty much immediately yeah absolutely go oh they've joined up with them oh okay have they got enough to have a fight yes i think they have crossbow men can you take care of these guys there's one guy left just yeah uh, there you go riddled with uh riddled with crossbow bolts marvelous okay right that's all that sorted let's see if there is an encampment up there because if there is that is going to be a little bit of an issue i have to go and deal with it no Okay, they, some barbarians just, I don't know, came out of the trees or something. I'm not entirely sure. Okay, right, fine. <laughs> Little bit strange, but there we go. Right, you go back to defending Northampton because that is what we want you to do. Yep, absolutely. Um, and you guys stand, oh, 75. Okay, there are some seasoned barbarians. Yeah, they've, been, they've been well seasoned with salt and pepper. They're delicious if you leave them on a slow cook for three hours. Uh, okay, so... We need to take care of those. What we'll do is we will wrap things up for now and we'll come back next time and we shall deal with these barbarians. I know we've not really kind of progressed much in the way of uh, in the. Oh, hang on a minute. Hang on. We're going to go into the Age of Plague. No, Age of Plague may become the future in five turns. Greece is 35.84% of the way through, pushing us all into the Age of Plague. OK, we dealt with that, Greece. We dealt with that. We're lovely and clean. We wash our hands and we socially distance. Greece, don't send us into the Age of Plague. Why must you do this, Greece? Can't we go into the Age of Monuments and build lovely big shiny monuments instead of building lots of places to bury people that are very ill? Oh dear. Right, okay, that's probably a little bit worrying. I mean, five turns. It says five turns. Uh, do you know what? Let's see if we head into the Age of Plague, shall we? Let's sort of move time on. We'll try and fight this battle over here. We should be okay. If we bring lots of people in to help out over here, I think we should be okay. Let's just sort of amass all our troops over in this direction. The scouts can move back a little bit because the scouts will possibly die if they attack them. Um, but yeah, let's try and get as many people as we can to defend against that force there because that is quite formidable. Okay, Brazil would like to become allies with us, which on one hand is quite good because, you know, it's good to have friends. But on the other hand, might be quite bad because if we do become their ally, are they immediately going to drag us into their war with Japan? Is that even still going on? I'm not entirely sure. Do you know what, Brazil? Let's become good buddies. Accept that alliance. Okay, right. Oh, there you go. Hi, friends. Ah, oh, it's good to be friends, isn't it? Right, come and help us kill some of the people, would you? Okay, right. We are now at war with Japan. Okay, right. This has certainly made things a little bit different. Uh, we have acquired... Um, a new boat, which is good. So that can start sailing around this part of the world, which is wonderful. Um, and I suspect maybe our town has been destroyed. We can repair the town. We can rebuild a ruined town now with engineering, which is quite good. But yeah, those barbarians did a proper number on our town, which is a little bit mean. Right, 17. Can we get any more in? Uh, I don't know if we've got three that we can stack. So we've got cavalry, uh, crossbowmen and city guard. It's probably not a great mix, but it'll have to do. Right, you guys run in over here. Get the other crossbow men in. Uh, let's have a fight with them. Let's see what we can do. So everybody, fire at the troublesome bar bars. Uh, yep, here we go. 16 rounds. Let's speed through to the end, shall we? It is fun watching the kind of fighty bits. Okay, a lot of the bar bars have fallen down, which is good. There's not many of them left. Um, okay, let's see what they get up to. We are trying to bring a few more in from this side. We're trying to bring some more in from Bristol, just to see if that'll help. Uh, you can just sort of, oh, now we're at war with Japan though, won't we? Okay, come back down here and just maintain visibility on this part of the world. Um, and you can just keep on boating around here, please. There we go, just keep on being boaty. And you guys hang around in there. Um, Bristol is idle. Let's maybe look at getting a granary set up just to provide 15 food. Sort out your food issues. That'd be quite handy. Um, oh, we've got that. We've gone over the bit where... And the barbarians are gone as well. Okay, this is pretty good. So hang on. Do this. You fortify. Uh, and you guys can... Where do we put them? Because they are crossbowmen. Okay, you come back down here. Come back down here and sort of sit around in Northampton for a bit. Uh, and then we've got you lot. So the city guard can go back into Liverpool. That's absolutely fine. You guys wait there. These crossbowmen 
I think we put back over here and fortify. And the scouts can also go here just to add a little bit of defense and some visibility. And then we'll use our engineering XP to rebuild a ruined town. And it's now called Lawrence. Okay, right. Hello, Lawrence. <laughs> right, we've got Lawrence now, which is good. Um, and we've got loads of points over here. Let's let's finish things up. Oh, yeah, we're trying to get to the age of play, can't we? Three turns. Okay, right. Bring the boat round the corner. What can we do here? Do we want plus one food or plus one region level where the palace is? Ah, we need to build a palace. Construct a palace is only 20. 20 of our government points. We've got 74. Let's build a palace in Northampton. Hooray for the palace of Northampton. I can't quite see it because the people stood around, but we've got a palace over there now. And then if we spend, say, another... We can nearly get both of these. Another 30 points gets us a region level where the palace is, but we could just get farms producing more food, which would be quite a good thing. So we'll spend some points on that. Lovely. And then in here, we've got enough to unlock one of these. Let's find where shells might be. Have we got a lot of lovely shells around our coast? We've got a couple of bits. A couple of shells just there and just there. Oh, and just here. Okay. That could be quite good. And down here and down here. Right. We've got the potential to gather lots of shells and then sell them on with a shell dying person. Right. That could also be exciting. Okay, right. Let's hope that Japan don't attack us. I just kind of want to get into the uh, into the next stage. I don't want to get to the next stage because it sounds like a terrible age. But let's see where we go. Come on, Greece. Plunge it into a terrible, terrible time. Okay, we've discovered arts. That's very good. So now, do we spend 22 turns to try to go into the Age of Kings when we know that we are likely going to be sent into the Age of Plague? So maybe let's spend some time working on... I mean, what do we go for? What do we go for? Belief. Two turns to get some belief systems in. That might be quite a good idea. Okay, Northampton's trained our very first Damascus sword unit, which is very good indeed. And sanitation is coming down a bit in Northampton. So let's build an aqueduct, shall we? Five sanitation. That's going to help quite a bit. So yeah, get that in, please. And I think... Is our unit going to remain down here? Yeah, I think our unit's down here, our Damascus Steel unit. Yeah, they can sort of hang around down there for a bit, just in case Japan get a bit fighty from this side. Um, and I think this is going to be it. I think now we might well go into the Age of Plague. Here we go. Let's see. The population of your regions have been reduced due to a sudden outbreak of plague. Well, isn't this wonderful? Thanks, Greece. <laughs> Greece. You're not supposed to do this. You're supposed to take us to wonderful new places when you go into a new age. Not this. The Age of Plague. A great plague strikes, reducing all populations to 67%. We've lost one third of our population already and automatically. Outbreaks disable improvements and then reduce population if not stopped. A plague doctor unit spawns. Oh, good. Generate culture per religious population by founding or joining a religion. Okay, so religion kind of pops up because people are turning to you know, whatever they want to believe in to help them with the germs and the horror of all this kind of stuff. Um, and new national spirits have unlocked. Okay, let's continue for now. So we're not quite in that age. We haven't moved into that just yet. So what we'll do is we will wrap things up for now. And when we come back, we shall have some open air quotes, fun, close air quotes, in the age of plague. I mean, look, all the water's gone all red and sinister. It's all gone a bit strange. So, uh, yeah, there we go. A plague ravages the land and generally bad things are going to happen now. And it's going to be a little bit tricky to manage all of this. But there we go. That's what happens in this game. It's not always standard. Sometimes it's a good age you go into. Sometimes it's a little bit of a bad one. And we've been sent into a bad one, courtesy of Greece. Thanks, Greece. Well done. But there we go. So we'll finish up for now. Come back next time and deal with the plague, which is lovely. Hopefully you are still enjoying this. If you are, please do leave a like. That would be most marvellous indeed. And also, if you're not already, then please do subscribe to keep up to date with how we get on here next time out in millennia but for now thank you very much for joining me in the geek cupboard and i'll see you next time that burn has got oh he's got the plague <laughs>
our home is called Home Stinky Home. <laughs> yeah, I think Bernard is done for. Now, Bernard, you still smell nice. A flute trumpet or something. It, it's a flumpet. So is this going to work? Oh, we do. Oh, some saucy whisperings going on. <laughs> Here's the happy couple, everybody. <laughs>